So the whole kind of CM senior project uh, process starts with CM 461, uh, which I took a year ago. And in that, we kind of learn uh, what we're eventually gonna do, uh, talking about it helps us choose our project. Um, so we work with our students and work with our teacher. Um, we talk about things we're interested in uh, with the construction industry and what might make sense for us to do for a senior project, um, where we could get some research and everything like that. And then 461 also teaches us where we can go find resources, how to go about actually gathering our data um, and just kind of the whole process to get to where, to the point where you can actually do your senior project. And then uh, after 461, you do 462, which is not an actual class, it's more the uh, independent study part. And that's where you either, if you haven't collected your data yet from people, you go out, do your interviews, talk to people, send out your surveys, um, get all your data points for your project, and then you eventually write your project, um, put it in a binder, do a poster board, and then do what we're doing today where we present it, do a little elevator speech, and uh, just talk about our whole process of interviewing people and um, like why we chose our topic and everything. The uh, Cal Poly Senior Project program is a requirement of all students that are graduating from uh, the CM curriculum. And uh, it's something uh, that they start in their junior year and they complete in their senior year. And uh, one of the things that we particularly emphasize in the program is action research, where they uh, go off on their internships and they discover something of interest to them and they somehow uh, wrap it into a senior project for themselves, creating new knowledge in an area that they get are particularly excited about. So for instance, um, a student might go out on a project and discover that the, the productivity rates uh, on a, uh, on a, for a certain company that they're working for aren't quite up to national standards. So they might investigate that uh, situation and come up with uh, results of, of why it's not, uh, they're not as productive as they might be and what they might do to improve that productivity. Well, bam, right there, that's a senior project that they can uh, move forward with and write about dive deep into, do some literature re research, do some analysis, and, and who benefits from that? Well, the student benefits from going through the exercise, the company benefits from uh, in increased productivity rates in the end because they were able to resolve their problem some way, and uh, it's, we just see it, and the department wins because the student has learned more than they, than they did from before, so it's, we see it as a really nice win-win-win situation for everybody. I think with Senior Project it's nice to know that you're allowed to pick something that hasn't been touched on and you're free to kind of go out of the CM curriculum to find that proof almost, like facts that what you want to talk about has been talked about in the world and it is important to whatever you want to implement it in. Um, so for mine, facilities management isn't talked about and there's so many top execs that have written about how the increasing demand just helps you as a person and um, helps you get clients, helps you create relationships and it's nice to know that maybe my project can be used um, for the department even if it's just like a section of a class that's taught in facilities management. Um, I like to think that if mine was used then it would kind of create the attention to like the importance of it or the need. Um, so I chose my senior project topic uh, for the volunteer construction work in Mexico because I've done a couple trips in high school. Uh, my uh, youth group went every summer um, and we did various amounts of construction, either digging trenches to taking part of a house and moving it somewhere and building the house back up um, and then just building houses too. And so it's always been something that I've been interested in. Um, in my high school we also did a couple of Habitat for Humanity trips um, and it's cool to see how impactful it can be to really go out and I talk to the people who you're building a house for and then just how happy they are to have something like a house because uh, it's easy to take for granted what we have up here. And see, you go, when you go down there, it's a really uh, eye-opening experience and you get a lot of good, great perspective on you know how the rest of the world is outside of America. Um, so it's I've, for me, it was, I've done a couple of those trips and um, there's things I always go wrong on it. And so I was trying to, uh, with my project, do something where churches could take it, read it, and then say, all right, here's some issues that tend to happen a lot on these volunteer trips to Mexico with churches, with youth groups, or nonprofits, or whatever. And then uh, a couple of steps that the industry takes to solve those for their actual projects and how churches might be able to kind of downgrade those a little bit and apply them to their actual trips that they do. 